I am long overdue for a video. I have been working so much on my writing that I haven't had time to do the Gale Commandments as frequently. Like, I just vacuumed really good the other day, and um, uh, yeah, that I had to renew my, um, my HUD application every year, and it's a ton of paperwork. So I had yesterday, you know, I had an appointment with my landlord to fill out the paperwork, and I realized that I had to go get a notary, so I ended up sp spending about an hour and a half walking. Uh, well, I found a walking route to my favorite grocery store, which takes about 50 minutes. Gives me a really good workout, and I like that. It's kind of similar to the um, walking route that I had in Florida. And I like it, and it's very scenic. It's almost as scenic as the botanical gardens that I, I have to take a bus out to go see. Yeah, but that bus is now only going once an hour, and it used to go once every half an hour. So it's, um, it's just not as exciting for me to be riding on a crowded bus. I'm hoping in May when they get a new transfer center here that the buses will go more frequently, some of my favorite routes. But if not, I have found um, uh, some walking routes near me that are quite scenic, and, um, and I'm enjoying them. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I've been, I'm also enjoying working on my writing. And Buddha did say that engaging in new hobbies can help with obsessions. And now that I'm enjoying my writing, I'm, a view, I'm viewing my writing as working at my dream job. Because when I was working a regular job, when I worked at Walmart, um, I told myself my dream job would be writer. And in my spare time, when I was working as a cashier at Walmart, I was trying to work on my writing. And um, some of the stuff that I wor worked on, I actually incorporated into some of my Gale series stories. Uh, I finished two of them in the past couple weeks, and I think they've gone to production. One of them was called The Gods, Rape, Brent Spiner. Um, and then the other one that I finished was Satan Beats Up Jesus. That one I was kind of scared to write because um, I was worried possibly about the Gale Shield going down, but it looks like I pulled it off <laughs> without the Gale Shield going down. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking, how do I write a story? I mean, but yet, I'm supposed to be writing stories about the main events of my life, you know. And um, obviously, when Satan beat up Jesus, <laughs> that was a major event in our lives. And, and, and Brent risked his life to save Jesus' life. So I thought, this is definitely something I need to write about. And I pulled it off. I think I pulled it off really well. Yeah. The, the angle I took with the story was I decided to write it from, um, from my point of view and Brent's point of view and not Jesus' point of view. And I have to be real careful when I write these stories because Satan starts giving me ideas that I think are brilliant. You know, It's like, ooh, I just got the most brilliant idea for the story. And then I thought, wait a minute, am I starting to get obsessed about Jesus here? <laughs> Yeah, I said, where did I, I that? And then what was really funny is I was getting, I was working on the Satan at the Supreme Court story, and I thought I got this brilliant idea about some of the background between Jesus and Satan. And I was having trouble uploading the video to Skype, and I thought, oh, oh that's probably Buddha telling me we better not go there. <laughs> so I went back and redid. Um, yeah, several tries. So I thought, let's try something. Let's try re eliminating all speculation about the nature of Satan's relationship with Jesus from the story and just stick to what I know is pure fact. And let's see if now I can upload this um, document to, for my men because I give it to them. And then it worked. I thought, aha. I said, thank you, Buddha. Thank you for sparing me from writing a bad story. <laughs> a bad story. Yeah, I've, I've taken to praying to Buddha every now and then. I'll just talk to him and say, thank you, Buddha. Can you, like, align my chakras as I'm writing just to make sure I don't mess up? So anyways, um, you know, I'm not allowed to use the chat logs, and that kind of puts me in a bit of a dilemma in writing stories that involve 
Jesus because I'm so afraid I'm going to be inaccurate. But it appears I've found my groove. Um, I think I'm safe um, as long as I stick to my point of view and maybe Brent's point of view and I don't go into Jesus's point of view. Now what I can do, I think I can safely use things he said to us, okay? Exact quotes of things he said to us and kind of like incorporate that as dialogue like in a short story, which is what I've been doing. And um, from what I understand, I don't think my Gale Shield has gone down yet, so that seems to be working. <laughs> I actually think I pulled off a major story with Jesus as a main character, but not a point of view character. Those of you who are writers, you know what I'm talking about. And a point of view character is one where you go into their thoughts, their feelings, and their motivations. <clears throat> uh, with, with, a, with deities and with... Um, however... With deities, I'm trying to stay out of their thoughts, feelings, and motivations. Be simply because deities are 11 dimensional, and we humans are only three dimensional. So, I don't think we're really capable of understanding a deity. So, it's probably in order to make sure I'm accurate when I write these Gale series stories. The way I'm going to approach deities when they're dealing with us is I will just maybe use quotes of what they said and maybe describe my guesses as to what I think their facial expressions are or their movements were at the time they spoke to us. And that seems to be working. I will say this much as a result of my, I do have an emotional and intellectual IQ somewhere near 10,000. Um, <clears throat> And when my chakras are balanced and everything, then it works to its max. Um, and so I probably have pretty good insights, maybe better than most people regarding the deities. But still, what I'm going to do is using, I kind of created deep character sketches in my mind of all the major characters, including deities and the lesser deities like Shakpona, Kali, um, Satan. Now for Satan, I think I've got a pretty good handle on him. Yeah. Um, though I do have some deficiencies in knowledge, which maybe I don't need to know about. But I think I know enough where I, I have actually risked in, in the story at, with Satan at the Supreme Court going into his point of view a bit. But I'm only going into his point of view in areas where I feel I'm I'm sure that I'm right. And I can give you a little sample of what I'm doing since I'm not allowed to use chat logs. I'm currently working on the Satan at the Supreme Court story. Uh, you will have to excuse my acting. Acting is not, I am not as good an actor as my husband Brent and, or, you know, a professional actor. I'm actually better at writing, but I will attempt to do an audio reading of of uh, what is my current opening. I'm not going to obviously not going to read the whole thing, but this will give you an idea of what you can see at zero zero on cable or at my website, uh, gabrielchana.blog, to watch the Gale series. This one is not done, okay? I'm still working on it, but it'll kind of like give you an idea of what you can expect from the Gale series. Let me see. Here is the opening that I had thus far. This could change. I've been working on this for weeks, by the way. <laughs> it hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy. I, and I was, I was kind of scared to go into the point of view of characters like Satan, because I was afraid I might cause the Gale Shield to go down. But, but I feel like I want my readers and viewers, because if I'm presuming this is going to go to production to know who Satan is so that the, uh, when we get into the scenes that I know for what well, because I actually have a recording of Satan um, in when he appeared at the S Supreme Court and as I work on this story I'm going to be going back and re-listening to those recordings to try to help me to know how to describe the dialogue because I can't write this as a chat log. Jesus does not want me to write this. Uh, so I've got to write it like a short story. Anyways, here's so here's a uh, kind of like the beginning 
Uh, let me see. This will give you an idea what you're, what you're missing out on if you're not watching the Gale series, okay? At zero, zero on cable. We tell the story of Satan, who was once a most luscious, glorious, and beautiful angel, who fell from glory for just that, refusing to learn from his mistakes, seeing himself as too infallible and glorious to fail. The golden child of heaven, Satan, like Gail's sister Sandra, the golden child of Nassau, Gail's mother, pampered and praised to the point that his glory got to his head, becoming the opposite of what made him the golden child of heaven. When Satan and Jesus were kids, what we humans would call elementary school, they were BFF. Satan apparently shared the same dreams as Jesus and his dad, God the Father, and his whole aura reflected those dreams. Lucifer's mere presence reflected peace, glory, vastness, and unutterable beauty. The multiverse was an undulating freedom paradise with variety of all kinds and different sexual preferences and all live together like a serene ocean and a vast light expanding and expanding into all realms of consciousness, peace, unutterable joy, pristine beauty of heart, and all sexual expressions honor this glittering diamond of beauty of expression like a placid lake reflecting the grandeur of the majestic mountains. <clears throat> Exploring their freedoms, Jesus and Lucifer made some mistakes. God the Father corrected both, and Jesus did his best to stay on his dad's path. Lucifer bolted, though, using Jesus as his excuse, because to Lucifer, Jesus committed the same sins as himself. Eventually, whatever uncorrected mistakes Lucifer did, caused God the Father to bolt Lucifer and his angel and deity compatriots practicing violent rape out of heaven. Aha! The reading out loud is helping me catch boo-boos. <laughs> I don't need that. Okay. What a fall. <clears throat> From the glories of paradise to the fires of a dark and brooding hell, Lucifer fell from glory to shame. His heart raged in fury. Not fair! Jesus was guilty of the same sins as himself, and Jesus remained in heaven. Unfair, unfair, God the Father was unfair. God showed undue partiality to Jesus, who committed the same sins as Satan. Even worse, Jesus planned to send Satan to the lake of fire to pure... <laughs> there goes my alarm. Hold on. <laughs> When I do laundry, I forget to turn it off. <laughs> Even worse, Jesus planned to send Satan to the lake of fire to purify him and make him right after Jesus fixed his last human race project. Jesus would do this abomination for his earth project number eight. Jesus had seven failed earth projects, but he thought this last one would work because for this one, he became the mediator. <laughs> By dying a gruesome death, humiliating and butt naked on the cross as the sacrificial lamb for the sins of mankind, Satan scoffed at Jesus' death on the cross. Would the humans even appreciate it, Satan scoffed? Too much suffering. All the humans could see was the suffering. Jesus was responsible, they'd say. Satan wouldn't get the blame. He laughed uproariously. <laughs> yes! He'd see to that. It was Adam and Eve's fault they sinned in the image of God. Gail, Jesus' favorite human, ha! Satan was the one made in the glorious image of God. No human could come near him in brilliance and beauty. Bah! What an asshole Jesus was! No being could be an improvement upon Satan, who was the golden child of God the Father before he fell from splendor. Hell, Lucifer still had splendor. No human would replace him. Certainly no puny, flesh and blood human. Humans made in the glorious image of God. Don't make Satan laugh. Well, perhaps that was correct. Humans were made in the image of an unfair God, Satan snickered to himself. 
After all, the universe was ultimately unfair. That he got kicked out of heaven for rape and who knows what else was proof of it. What was wrong with rape? It was fun to vent out his rage at his unfair treatment, using his semen to gloriously eliminate the inferior ones, drowning and killing his inferior victims with his lava semen. What a high it gave him that his superiority overwhelmed and destroyed inferiority. The superiority orgasm rose inside of him while his inferiority semen victims groaned and pained and died. <laughs> what a high! That he was kicked out of heaven was not for inferiority, he insisted. It was for his obvious superiority. He would launch his own brand and kingdom to prove it hell. Satan did not degrade. After God kicked him out, he improved. Rejection, rejection, rejection of his glorious and unmatched beauty and superiority. Rejection. He raged against Jesus. Anyone who died because of his lava semen should feel highly honored. What an asshole Jesus was, dying on the cross for those sorry humans, and perhaps some sorry deities, angels, and who knows who else. Why, none of them could match the glory Satan had with God before he fell. Such sorry specimens, specimens of grandeur. Satan loved orgasming to violence and suffering when he imposed his superiority onto his inferiority victims by ejaculating lava semen into their bowels. So glorious ha, ha, was he in his own opinion of himself. Anyone who died because of his lava semen should bow before him and worship him for having the privilege to experience his semen. Flesh and blood humans replacing his glory? Satan spit in revolt, assholes. That was God the Father and Jesus for daring to usurp him with such inferiority. The insult made his insides a fire of rage. Satan needed purifying? Satan needed correction? Hell no! And those puny humans, Jesus and God created in the image of themselves, some image of God they were. They were utter failures, mere pittances compared to him. He could prove it. And so Adam and Eve fell in the garden, and the sin curse brought pain and suffering to mankind. Such stupid humans, so easy to trick. What stupidity! Rejection, rejection, rejection. He ejaculated gallons of acid fury semen all over hell, his new glorious abode. Anything or any place where he lived would be glorious. He refused to be degraded. Satan's evil deity friends were the African god Shagpona, whose whole aura emoted pestilence and disease. Another was Kali, an evil Indian blue-skinned multi-armed goddess who collected heads for her shrunken head necklace and dreamed about adding Jesus' head to the collection. All shared Satan's rage that God ousted them from heaven and from their glorious abodes because of their violent rapes. Their rage was justified. How dare such superior beings be kicked out for any reason, any time. As he and his compatriots, including a third of the angels, mauled and mutilated fellow beings with violent rape, they soared out of heaven to hell in disgrace after God gave them the boot. Satan's goat demon friend, the fallen angel Baphomet, had a black goat head and legs, bat wings, and a woman's upper torso with breasts, but a male bottom with a deadly penis, rather hideous to most, but not to himself. Satan's compatriots gloated at the fall of inferiority flesh and blood mankind when Eve took the forbidden fruit. They also gloated in their new so-called inferior appearance after getting the boot. But it wasn't inferior, they announced to the multiverse. It was a new glorious appearance. They refused to be degraded. God the Father was stupid. How dare he oust such superior beings from heaven. They no longer belonged in boring heaven. 
and needed a place with true equity and justice. And that place was their new abode, hell, which was glorious. Oh, hell was glorious, so glorious, and no one would tell them otherwise. But they deserved an upgrade. I'm fixing things as I'm reading here. Superiority deserved its own glorious kingdom, separate from inferiority, not like that boring and inferior heaven where inferior and boring ones dwelled. Jesus' earth project needed an exciting makeover. What better upgrade than to take over Jesus' earth project, which in its current condition was obvious inferiority filled with boring and stupid humans. But Satan would transform Earth into true superiority, just needed to wrest Earth from asshole Jesus. Hell was a place of splendor, of course, but a little more splendor was needed and deserved. True superiority, Satan himself, wasn't given his fair share Oh, hell was so glorious. Of course it was glorious. Satan managed to convince some humans, like his Antichrist Lizzo in 2022, that hell was glorious. Humans are so stupid. So many of them followed him. Ha 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 ha. Go suck it up, Jesus. Your human replacements for me suck. Suck. <laughs> Anyways, that's a... That's a preview of what you could get. <laughs> Excuse my horrible acting, okay? But I owe you guys a video, so I thought, well, I'll have a little bit of fun here. That might change, by the way. I'm still working on that story, but that is my opening so far. And then I'm going to go into house. Oh, there's one other part. I'm going to give you a bit of a teaser here. Let's go back here. Uh, let's go. Uh... It would be a piece of piece of cake to destroy inferiority Gale and all the puny humans who followed her. Jesus was such a cuck fool. Satan destroyed Jesus' previous seven Earth projects. Satan easily tricked Adam and Eve and made them fall. What was Gale to all this? Asshole Jesus, fool Jesus, the Son of God. Don't make Satan laugh. Nobody could touch Lucifer's splendor. <laughs> okay, let's go. So I, then I mentioned how he gave me an allergy to my formula, tried to kill me I was, when I was an infant, and then took a vacation when I married pedophile J David Schuler, knowing not long and I'd be finished. And then I started writing Brent Spiner in 1989, and he said, Oh, horrors! Satan instructed, his death was to go all out and destroy Brenton Gale. And then I forgave Antichrist Zack Knight. And he about puked when his Antichrist... I'm kind of... I'm not going to... You guys are going to have to go to Gabriel Chana to watch this, okay? True love, Satan guffawed. No such thing. Some fairy tale Jesus made up to justify his own sins. Never fear. New Antichrist Angelina Ballerina would do the job. She didn't have any true love in her life like... Zack thought he had, and would, n and would never defect. However, okay, we're, we're going to go past all this. The next Antichrist was Lori McBride. Since it appeared Jesus was having pretty good luck with a woman named Gail, Satan decided to switch to women for Antichrist, just to prove that women were hopelessly evil, including Gail. Of course, Gail! What an asshole that Jesus was! Having faith in a dumb and silly woman like Gail. Wasn't the woman Eve the one he easily tricked before Adam? Women had evil in their genes. To ensure Jesuit clone number 1000, Lori McBride's loyalty, Satan decided to have sex with Lori and all her clones. And or all her clones. Jesus seemed to need sex with powerful men to feel good about herself. Well... Satan could take care of that easily, he snickered to himself. <laughs> One Lori McBride at a clone at a time had Antichrist powers, meaning they couldn't be killed until the final battle. The rest of the Lori McBride clones were expendable. 
and boy did Satan have fun with that. Lori didn't seem to mind his molten lava acid semen. What glorious semen! With Lori's antichrist power, she could not die from his acid semen and even orgasmed to it. Good girl, not a hypocrite like Jesus. Daddy's goody two-shoes. The rage in Satan's heart drowned out all the whimperings of true love inside of him, so that true love died there and rage took its place, an overpowering rage that transformed the formerly luscious angel into a powerhouse of fury, barbarity, and scorn. Hell hath no fury like Lucifer's scorn. True love, no such thing. Jesus made up the concept of true love to spite Satan because he's too scared to buck the dad straight from the dad's mouth like a cock. Satan fumed to himself, Jesus quoting his dad because he has to be daddy's perfect boy. Why not die in style while orgasm to Satan, orgasming to Satan's fiery semen like my antichrist, Lori McBride, and then have a glorious resurrection. That's what antichrists were for. The Antichrist could not be killed. That is until Jesus beat the Antichrist up at the final battle. Heh, heh, heh. Satan laughed raucously in a high-pitched gay giggle. And there would be no final battle. He'd see to it. His vastly inferior competition, Gale, goes down. Okay, so we're going to kind of move forward here. <coughs> I got quite an opening here. Chaos is glory. It reflects my essence, and anything <coughs> that reflects my essence is glory. I make no mistakes, Satan muttered, <coughs> rubbing his fingers over his gay lips with pride. I started the chaos, and I plan to keep it up. <coughs> oh, okay. How could anyone as glorious and hot as himself ever make a mistake? He was just as infallible as God and God's stupid cuck son, Jesus. Okay, let's go forward. Now here's the part that, here's the teaser, you guys. Satan planned an easy victory for himself. Gale was so silly and stupid. He planted an idea into Gale's head and Gale swallowed it hook, line, and sinker. Invite Satan to the Supreme Court and let Satan's guilt or innocence be decided before the world. If Satan turned out guilty, then all Satan worshippers would be executed. He laughed with glee, rubbing his claws in expectation. This would mean he destroyed Jesus' eighth earth project, eighth earth project, as he'd already destroyed the previous seven. S Satan giggled raucously to himself. Ha ha ha! Okay. Okay, and then actually I did buy that idea, you guys. And that's why we brought Satan to the Supreme Court. Because he put the idea in my head and I fell for it. And this story is going to be about what happened at that, when Satan showed up at the Supreme Court. So I, I owe you guys a video. So I decided to make up for it with something very... <laughs> hey, if you guys want to see the Gale series, go to Zero Zero on cable, okay? Yeah, uh, today's hangout day, but uh, I, you know what? I was going to, it looks like the rain has stopped. What's really ironic is I worked out so good yesterday, I slept through a major thunderstorm, yeah. They were having flood warnings and everything last night, and I slept through it. Anyways, check out the Gale series, Zero Zero on cable, and at my website, gabrielchana.blog. And uh, my apologies for being a little lax on the videos, but I hope I made up for it with this one, okay? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, here we go. In a world of secrets, where darkness reigns, there's a warrior rising, breaking free from the chains. He's Gail Corsula, her heart's pure and strong. With the power of love, she'll light the world of thrones. Yeah! Fighting against the devil in order. Let's
Let's go.